Water, the sort of element of life, really, and um, it is the transport system that everything uses, you know, between the interiors of a cell, it actually does the transporting, and it does the transporting through the whole landscape. So it's the production line of every living thing. And if we didn't have water to move things around and to facilitate those processes, then the process wouldn't be. We probably take it for granted, probably less so, you know, with the drought, but I mean, water just drives everything we do in human society, but also to what, what drives ecosystems. I mean, every ecosystem in the, in the world. It's in much shorter supply in terrestrial systems than we understand. And uh, the way that water has operated for millennia has been changed quite dramatically by the way that we as humans impact the earth. Where is water? It's everywhere that living processes are able to operate. And without it, um, they just can't operate. So everything within the natural system is trying to manage water. Grass creates clay layers, which absorbs water, um, cells, organic material. And one of the very important things you can see, these have got water sitting on them. But that will happen every day in the environment. Each of these plants is an air conditioner, which if it can keep it cool enough, brings back the moisture it used in the daytime. So it's that recycling system, not only of the raw materials of production, but the water recycling is what runs the whole landscape. And the water is moved, of course, by gravity. And for water to get into the clouds and be rain, it's powered by the sun. So when we go back to the really simple things, we've got the sun evaporating water to the clouds and gravity shifting it from there on. Well, salinity is a problem in Australia because we ignore these simple fundamentals. And that in fact, every time it rains, on average, 60 parts per million of salt comes in and then it's stored underneath the root zone because each plant is a little factory that pumps water out of the ground and the salt that it doesn't want is deposited below the root zone. Now, when you've got gravity bringing in other water and then if you lose the plants who were the managers of this balance, then you get an imbalance and that water pushing in on top of the in-ground water where the salt can be pushes it sideways and at that interface where it comes to the surface, that lateral moving on the slope of the ground, that's dry land salinity. Salty water is uh, quite a lot heavier than fresh water and the more salt that's in it, the heavier it is. So you know, when that very salty water gets to the surface, it's been pushed by some other force and that's what we need to examine. What force is pushing this to the surface and how is it getting there? Well, the role of vegetation in regulating salinity is that you have to go to the really basics. It's each plant is a biological pump, solar operated. It's a, so it's a solar operated pump. And for it to grow, it's got to pump water out and, and evaporate it to keep the photosynthetic process cool. So it then effectively is a pump. And as it pumps water out of the ground, the new fresh water pushes what salt's not needed below the root zone. Now the really important thing is that the residue of the plant has a reasonable balance of salts in it and when it if it's not eaten by an animal it decomposes so that is slow released whereas if we try to put it on as an artificial thing and we don't have it in a plant it's released the first time it, what it gets water on it whereas if it's in a plant it's only released as the natural decomposition takes place. So it's a slow released and automatic system which we tend to forget. And in simple terms, if we were to mulch farm, most of our problems would disappear. And it's been done by various civilizations for thousands of years, effectively. Yet we suddenly started this chemical agriculture, we forgot all the basic rules, and we know it doesn't work. And what I hope we're talking about is if that 
is the case, what do we do about fixing it? We grow every plant and we recycle it. That's exactly what the environment always did. Erosion is the result of usually fertility, no, almost always fertility erosion. In other words, if a plant is able to grow, it's got enough um, capacity to override the erosive force of water, otherwise the landscape just couldn't function. A number of years ago, this was all slashed, and it was slashed for, for good reason. The council thought that, you know, their, their responsibility to the people, that we have to keep this all clean and safe. But the, there, was, there was action in town and we decided that it's, it's best to leave this unslashed. So all this has been allowed to grow. I've come down here following very heavy rain just to see how this behaves. And you can still see the evid evidence of it now. The water comes down here very, very rapidly because there's been a lot of catchment you know, changes upstream. The water rushes down here, all these water weeds lie down flat. So immediately, that uh, all the sediment underneath is protected so it's not washed away. That's one of the, the key things. And usually, um, you know, these water plants actually um, stand back up again, but this probably been a bit frosted, so I might have to wait till spring before that, that happens again. But, but also, too, just in terms of water physics, that if you've got water wishing down here into a rough surface, if we had a channel on the other side, exactly the same side, size, but made it out of metal or concrete, the water in the smooth channel will, will head, be a lot faster than the water here. The, so the, the vegetation actually slows the water. So vegetation is critical, absolutely, absolutely critical for any, any uh, landscape management of our waterways. So we know that plants are the single compensator for the energy of the sun, and the sun is what's powering all these movements of water, and obviously they also feed in-ground um, processes which contribute again to soil stability. And so as soon as we upset the plants, the soil gets more able to be eroded and the energies get greater in the water because there's nothing balancing it. So it's an exponential process. As soon as we take out the plants, the, the potential for erosion multiplies daily. It's nothing is sitting still that process as the soil life deteriorates and there is a very important issue with clays that plants use clay to store their own water that when the plants are not there starts to decompose so you've got clay emulsifying energies increasing and erosion becoming obvious The Australian wetlands are critically important in Australia and I do want to mention that we've taken 94% of them out. But they're the filters, they're the energy processes and producers, they're the steps between biodiversity and repeated groups of biodiversity. So they're the, the breakup of a monoculture, they're the food source for almost everything in the system in a between wets and dry cycles. They're the moderating of either those erosive energy cycles. So they were critically important in the Australian landscape. And 94% loss of those, if we considered they were like a human body where they duplicated the role of kidneys and liver, if you had only 6% of your liver and kidney function, you wouldn't be particularly healthy and as I drive around, I think our landscape is in a similar state, you know. It's very worrying. The Swampy Meadow, this is a term that was coined by, um, by another scientist. Swampy means swamp, you know, we all sort of figure that, you know, swamp's got water in it. We think of, um, you know, Shrek, you know, he lived in a swamp, so we've got that key ingredient, that water. And meadow, again, we think of a meadow as a grassland, it might have a few flowers, a bit of pasture. So if we put that both together, you know, we've actually got sort of a, a wet pasture land. And where we're going to find that, where water usually is, in, is in the bottom of valleys. It doesn't happen everywhere in, in Australia. It ha usually happens in, in areas with either high rainfall or where your evaporation isn't as high or it's not as hot. So the bottom of the valleys, 
Uh, it's quite wet. We have a lot of the grasses sim similar to this or, sim or other plants which actually like water. Some of the trees don't like it very much. So instead of having the trees in the bottom valley, we essentially have it's a lot of grasses or grass-like plants and a lot of people sort of term that swampy meadows. That once you have a valley which is um, incised or even gullied, you have a drop of your water table, but also you're not you're sort of getting those connections you used to have before, where the nutrients are coming from, from the slopes and back up because you might have grazing, grazing animals, whether it be wombats or kangaroos or sheep or cattle. They, there should always sort of be these cycles of nutrients and water going up and down and up and down. But if you've got a gully, you know, you've, you've sort of got this disconnection. It's what's happening down here can't get back up there. So we're essentially losing, you know, losing things which are so important, irreplaceable, losing our nutrients, losing our sediments, losing our water, everything sort of wishing out of the system. So that's, you know, that's one of the, just, you know, some of the key problems that you have. But, but also, too, you, you're drying out some of your valleys and so in Australia which is you know we're one of the driest continents on earth I mean Antarctica is drier but you know water is so important we just can't afford to, to lose any more water out of the system because not only are we creating problems where the gully is but we're creating problems further downstream where all the nutrients are going where all the sediments are going you know our, our rivers are uh, uh, we have problems with blue green algae and and we're having towns and villages which are which are having you know, flood damage because the, the water's rising up so quickly. They call that, you know, the, the flood peaks, peaks are getting higher. The form of landscape uh, is crucial to its function. Uh, water shapes the landscape along with wind. Um, all, landscapes val uh, all landscapes function as valley systems we might regard them as valley land and water systems or food and water systems um, and it's function and process in the landscape that we need to most concentrate on to cr increase biomass. The word farm uh, means in to increase and um, we all in our own way farm the landscape. We think uh, that we are increasing our landscape all the time, whether we build it up by way of infrastructure or build it up by way of soil. Um, but we must be conscious of whether we are actually accumulating our land functionally or whether we are dispersing it and losing from our landscape. M much of our landscape in Australia today is dispersing a as a system rather than uh, its catchment as a system.